Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, The Millennial Investor, and today we're going to be going over a couple of different things. We're going to be going over how should you invest in a recession? How should you invest in a bear market and when the stock market crashes? Should you change your investing strategy? Should you buy more of the stocks that you're down on? Should you buy new stocks? Should you sell the stocks you're down on? We're going to be going over that today and some of the news that we're going to be covering is more than 240,000 companies declare bankruptcy in the first two months of 2020. AMC Theaters is hiring a law firm to potentially file a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And then we're also going to be looking at things like Bernie Sanders is dropping out of the presidential race. And then we're also going to be looking at things such as Darden Restaurants, Honeywell Stock, and Ford Stock and show some of the differences between these dividend stocks, show why some of them are safe and then some of them are not. And also we're going to be going over a video recommendation by one of the people in the comments. So as usual, to start off the video, we're going to be showing an update on my portfolio. And before I do that, if you enjoy watching my videos, if you like M1 Finance, if you're interested in it, if you'd like to ask me any questions about it, this link is in the description of all of my videos. M1 Finance is free to use. There's no commissions. If you sign up using that link, we will each get $10. I will mention it in the video and you can help me grow this portfolio by giving me $10 by using my link and signing up. It's absolutely free, so give it a look if you're interested. So for the day, it was a very red day in the market. We closed down negative 2.67% or about a $45 loss and in total in the portfolio we're up 10.46% or about $156.85 of profit and we also just got our first dividend payments I mentioned in my last video I got my first payment from AT&T and then also I got my first payment from Verizon which was claimed the other day which should show up in a few weeks and it was for 34 cents so some of the biggest winners in the portfolio are still some of the same from last week. We have Whirlpool, Discover Financial Services, Foot Locker, Realty Income, and then some of our biggest losers. The only one that we're down on is Caterpillar stock. Caterpillar had a horrible day yesterday, and then we have some stocks that are close to break even like Procter & Gamble and stuff like that. I will be making a deposit to the portfolio very soon. I do plan on lowering down my cost basis on Caterpillar and also buying some of those other stocks that have lagged a bit on performance compared to some of the other stocks. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the performance of this portfolio, regardless as to whether or not it goes up and down. I am focused on this number, not this number. I've mentioned that before in previous videos. We are dividend growth investors. As you can see here from the name of this portfolio, dividend growth portfolio. So this number doesn't really matter a whole lot. I know it's fun to see it go up and see it in the green, but at the end of the day, this is the number that matters and I'm looking to lower my cost basis if they go down. So anyways, let's jump right into the news. More than 240,000 Chinese companies declare bankruptcy in the first two months of 2020. So this is really interesting. It is absolutely insane to see how quick these companies are forced to declare bankruptcy when the economy shuts down. They are so vulnerable to just one, two, three months with little to no income. Uh, just to give you an example, a real world example that is close to home to me, I was recently visiting family just last week. And in one of the small towns, there is a Pizza Hut. It's one of the only food locations in the area. It's a very small town. The Pizza Hut is already closed permanently. It's already shut down. Uh, it's closing its doors. It's never opening back up. And you realize how serious this is when you see small businesses closing down just miles away from where you live. So that's pretty crazy to see. If you see here, there's a spot in the article that I wanted to point out here. Roughly 55% of startups were under three years old. This is why I wanted to point out this part in the article is because in America, this is what's going to be most vulnerable. If you see here, roughly 55% were startups under three years old. These small businesses are what are going to be most vulnerable in America. Now, I know the Fed is trying to do things such as offer business loans, and some of them have to be paid back, some of them will not. Now, I understand that'll help, but the small businesses, the family-run businesses, uh, the businesses that are under three years old, the businesses that have been ran for decades but only have 5, 10, 15 employees, they don't need a lot of employees to operate, when they go out of business, there's not really any coming back because they don't have the pricing power that a lot of these giant corporations do that have billions of dollars on hand or hundreds of millions of dollars on hand. So it, it's pretty crazy to see 240,000, almost a quarter of a million companies declare bankruptcy in just two months. So uh, I really am interested to see how many of those companies declare bankruptcy in America within the first couple of months of the shutdown. So that's uh, pretty crazy to see and give you a good idea what America might look like. 
Next up, we have AMC Theaters and talks to hire a law firm to explore a potential Chapter 11 filing. So AMC, I'm sure most of y'all know, is the largest movie theater chain in America. They have excellent theaters. As a consumer, as a customer, I absolutely love AMC. Uh, I love their movie theaters. I love their facilities. They have great food and popcorn. Uh, anytime I do go to watch the movies, there's an AMC theater just right down the road from my house. That's where we always go. Uh, I love their theaters, and I really am sad to see this happening, but if we go here and we look at AMC Theater stock, while I do love their stock as a customer, as a business, it is a little bit disappointing. So if we go to AMC Theaters here, over the last five years, they have went down 93.83%. That is such a dramatic move. Uh, they were about a $33, $34 stock five years ago, and for five years straight, they paid 20 cents in dividends. So this is what made me get the idea for this video when I saw this. They paid 20 cents a quarter in dividends every single quarter, and then they slashed it over 80% down to just three pennies every single quarter. If you go to yesterday's close on Monday, April 13th, they were down 20% exactly. 20% down to almost $2 a share now. That is such a dramatic move. This is one of the things I wanted to point out about dividends. So you're chasing high yield. If you're chasing high yield dividend stocks, and don't get me wrong, the dividend yield in this stock would be massive, but it's unsafe. So if you're investing in the stock at six, seven, eight, nine dollars, and you're getting huge dividends, uh, well, then three months later it's cut, and now the stock is cut in half again. This is why you don't chase after yield. You chase after very successful, profitable, long-term investments. You don't chase after this giant double-digit number that is going to go away in six months. This is why this is so important. AMC has had problems way before the illness taken place and the recession hit us. If you see here, they've lost 93% in five years. This was a long downtrend. They had a little bit of uptrend. But since then, it's been, for the most part, just a straight line down for five years consecutively. Uh, they paid one, one quarter here. They had a special dividend of $1.55. What I don't understand is, if you're AMC Theaters, you're on the verge of bankruptcy, you're struggling to stay alive, you're not worried about paying dividends, why not cut that to zero? Why not keep every single dime that you can potentially keep in your pockets to pay employees, to keep you guys afloat, to do anything that you'd like to do the money with, why give that in dividends? Because once it's gone, it's gone. You're not going to be able to use that to survive and stay and keep the company afloat. So. Uh, just in the last year alone, they're down 87.4%. That is insane. Just a year ago, like I said, chasing high yield, even if you would have bought the stock, let's say if you bought it near this dip, let's say if you bought at $9, well, you would still be down significantly, significantly from where you were. So this is why you don't chase high yield. And uh, I really do hope that AMC does stay afloat because I absolutely love this company. Uh, I, I really want to see them stay alive because I love their movie theaters. But that said, I think this is going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. They were already pushing being unprofitable and potentially dying out within the next X amount of years. But once you have a one in a hundred year scenario like this, where a lot of consumer discretionary companies become practically irrelevant overnight, a company like AMC becomes very, very hard to make an argument for that they will uh, thrive in the future. So. Um, I had to go off to AMC. I really hope they stay alive, but we'll see what happens from here. The law firm that they did choose to file bankruptcy is a very reputable firm. They were hired by PG&E to handle their bankruptcy, the California utility company that had lots of issues. Uh, Sears, we all knew Sears, uh, was one of the largest companies in the United States several, several years ago. They accounted for 1% of the nation's GDP. Uh, Sears also hired this law firm for bankruptcy, so so hopefully if they do file bankruptcy, it'll uh, help them with that with that law firm. So next we have Bernie Sanders drops out of the presidential race out of 2020 Democratic race for president. I don't care what political party you identify with. I do not care if you support Bernie Sanders. I do not care if you're against him. I think, in my opinion, that this is a positive for the market. The reason being, Bernie Sanders had a lot of political views that were very extreme towards the market. He went after billionaires, he wanted to limit share buybacks, uh, dividends, he wanted taxation to be a lot heavier for the upper middle class. And regardless as to whether or not we can debate whether or not that was good policies, I believe a lot of stock market investors saw it as sort of the end of capitalism. So 
I think a lot of people in the stock market that are large head fund managers and stuff like that are seeing this as a positive, and that does have a piece to do with what's going on with the stock market rally we've seen the last few weeks. So uh, Bernie Sanders out of the race. It doesn't matter if you support him or if you were against him, but that's just news to keep up with, and that's just one less person we got to keep in the running for potentially being our president that will be elected in the next couple of months. So Bernie Sanders out of the race for 2020. Next, we'll be looking at Darden restaurants. So the reason why I wanted to show Darden. So if we pull up DRI, Darden stock here, this is a company that has been very well run. Uh, something that a lot of you guys don't know about me, I actually worked for Olive Garden, so which is a Darden company. If you can see here, some of the brands they have down low, they did have a high dividend yield. And this is a company that hasn't really made a lot of mistakes. If you see here, five years ago, they had dividends that paid 50 cents to 56 cents, 63 cents. 75 up to 88 cents it was a continual raise every single year not to mention the stock price in the last five years before this recession was doing very well it was a very well-run company they have done things such as spice up the menu with like their chicken alfredo for example and they've also changed uh, the never-ending possible they've raised prices and demand has skyrocketed for it they've done very well over the last few years but even a company such as this that has been very well run pay solid dividends, has good dividend growth, has cut their dividend to zero. Uh, they did this about two weeks ago, about the same time Ford did about two weeks ago. This was a stock that was $120-ish, $122, and then just a couple weeks later is $34. Uh, today it's trading about $61. This is the reason, this is the reason why I preach need-based companies. So I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna show you my portfolio. If we go through, I'm just gonna name off just some of the first ones I see. If you look at my portfolio, it's very need-based company. So let's go to some of my largest holdings. Southern Company is a utility company that is a need-based company. Demand will not shift very much. PepsiCo, they sell need-based products such as water bottles and drinks. People are always going to need drinks. Uh, Whirlpool, they sell washer and dryers and dishwashers and a lot of other appliances like that. Whirlpool is a need-based product. People are going to need washer and dryers like 90% of the American population. Waste management is probably the most need-based company in the portfolio. People are always going to create trash. It doesn't matter whether or not you're out and about shopping, eating dinner. It doesn't matter if you're staying home. It doesn't matter if you have a job. If you do or don't have a job, if you're getting a check from the government, you're going to create waste regardless coca-cola pretty much the same deal as pepsi i can keep going it's going to take forever to go through them all johnson johnson medicine kimberly clark toilet paper huggies diapers uh, procter and gamble daily products such as like shampoo and stuff like that there are so many products in my portfolio that are need-based consumer staples that people have to have regardless of what the economy is doing so this is why i preach need-based products so if we go to the last quarter of their balance sheet for darden stock they have cash and cash equivalents of 300 million. So 300 million for a $7 billion company is not massive, but they do have a long-term debt of 900 million. That's about a three to one ratio. A three to one ratio is not completely out of hand, but this number needs to be larger. Now in Darden Restaurants Defense, pretty much every single stock, regardless of how good or bad the company is, has been hit hard from this recession. The stock price has been hit hard. That said, you never know what's going to happen. Could we have predicted the illness and the recession taking place six months ago? No, nobody could have. This is why you keep cash on hand for when those rainy, unexpected days come through and that $300 million is not going to last very long. Uh, they've drawn off their line of credit like most companies have. Uh, just to give this in comparison, uh, the largest hamburger chain in the world, one of my largest investments, about the fourth, fifth biggest stock in the portfolio, McDonald's. They just reported that their same store sales were down negative 22%. I'm sure Darden, when they start to report numbers, is probably somewhere around that number. So 300 million is not going to last very long in a time when sales are significantly lower. So if you're a dividend investor, if you're a dividend growth investor in Darden and you believe in the company, which I do, I it, it's, it's great to see that they're a well-run company, but you have to be prepared. That balance sheet needs to be ready at all times. That's why the other day I was showing Facebook's balance sheet. They have no long-term debt and they have $55 billion in cash ready to go. Uh, $300 million is not big enough. I would like to see that number doubled or maybe even tripled, uh, maybe even in a good good scenario. But um, 
Uh, Darden stock is a stock that I love, but they did cut their dividends. So I'm going to compare this stock, which is a very well-run company, to a company that has been very poorly run. So now let's look at a stock that has been very poorly run, which has had a lot of criticism over the last few years. Let's look at Ford stock. So if you look here at Ford stock, we're going to search them on M1 Finance. Ford stock over the last several years have been getting absolutely killed. During the 2008-2009 recession, Ford stock almost went bankrupt. You see over the last five years, it's a negative 67.69% decline, about a $16 stock. Today, they're five. They're $5. Um, if you see here, their dividend yield would be very high. This is where I talk about chasing dividend yields. You'd have nearly a 12% yield, but they just cut their dividend. For the last five years, if you see their dividend history here, they paid 15 cents pretty much every single quarter, nonstop, until this quarter. They had to cut their dividends to zero. So this is why you look for companies that are going to be successful in the long term. Ford has lost a huge part of the market share for their company. They really only have two models of cars that have really been profitable. They have their two uh, cash cows, which is the F-150 and the Ford Mustang. If you were to get rid of those cars tomorrow, this probably would already be a bankrupt company. So yeah, you see that PE ratio. I'm not sure what's going on there, but Ford, I'd say about one of the only good things going for Ford is that they do have a huge brand. The branding power is massive. When I bring up Ford vehicles, you all know exactly what company I'm talking about, but it does not matter when you have a company that is as financially unhealthy as this is. So if you want to look at something here, we're going to look at their long-term debt. Their long-term debt, now keep in mind, these numbers are from 2016 all the way up to 2019, the end of 2019. So this was before the recession hit. This was at the end of 2019 over the last four years. So this is in the middle of a bull market when the economy is booming. 93 million is their long-term debt in 2016 to 102 to 100 to 101. So it is a steady increase in long-term debt with declining sales. Uh, one thing just to bring up to give it a comparison, Tesla. Tesla is the future. They have electric vehicles. If you see Tesla stock, they've been pretty much in a straight line up, for especially for the past year or so. Uh, I believe yesterday they went up something like 8%. Tesla is a very well-run high growth company so they went up significantly again yesterday over the last five years you can see it's a very dramatic increase especially in the last year or so this is a company that is renovating and innovating if you compare that to ford their research and development is horrible they are so behind in so many other companies its competitors even in the gas vehicle space such as like toyota and gm it is so far behind that if we do begin to switch to electric vehicles, Ford is going to have no vehicle that will even be able to closely compete with a Tesla or some of its other main competitors. So Ford is a company that has been very poorly run. They have over $100 billion in debt. And I know recently their bond rating was recently just downgraded to junk rating. Uh, Ford is a company that I could see eventually, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but probably within the next decade, if consumer habits continually changing to electric vehicles, Ford could potentially go out of business. So uh, Ford, uh, let's see what happens with Ford. They've pretty much been in a straight line down and now they have no they have no dividends. So I don't really see a reason to own it or why anyone would want to own it. Like I said, the one thing they have going for them is their branding power. So maybe it'll be the comeback story of the century. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think within the next X amount of years, the next decade or so, Ford will probably be gone. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but that's just my prediction. So the next stock we're going to be looking at here is Honeywell. I'm going to show you this stock because this is a very safe, well-run dividend company that even in a recession should be just fine. I'm showing this company because this is a company that I considered adding to my portfolio. There's a couple of reasons why I didn't add it. It was mostly because of this number right here, the dividend yield. So if you look here over the last five years, they went up 33%. Uh, they have dividends of 52 cents to 60 cents to 67 to 75 to 82. Now they're all the way up to 90 cents a quarter in dividends. You can see here they've pretty much been in a continuous lineup. This company is often compared to 3M. 3M sells over 50,000 different products. 3M is a company that I own that's one of the largest in my portfolio. They are one of the oldest dividend aristocrats. I believe off the top of my head they have 62 consecutive annual dividend raises. From $1.03 to $1.11 to $1.18, $1.36, $1.44, and $1.47. They actually just raised it this quarter. 
Honeywell is a very similar company to 3M in the fact that they are a conglomerate and they sell thousands of products. And much like 3M, they are a very old company. If you see in the description here, they were founded in 1885. What a old company. So if you see here, let's look at their balance sheet. We're going to pull up the balance sheet for Honeywell International. And their balance sheet is very financially healthy. This is what I'm talking about when I see a company that regardless as to whether or not the recession is slowly happening or whether it's like this situation where it happens pretty much overnight and the country shuts down in the blink of an eye, this is what you want to see from a company. So uh, 7.8 million in cash to 7 to 9.2 to 9. So you can see it's a steady increase up. It's a steady gradual increase up in cash and cash equivalents. But if you scroll down to their long-term debt, it's the complete opposite story. They had 12 billion in debt, 12 billion again to 9 and 11. So it's a gradual decrease in long-term debt while the cash is steadily increasing. So one thing that I really like about Honeywell that I compared it to say a 3M, I mentioned this in one of my previous videos when I was talking about 3M and the success I see behind it. There's a reason why it's been around as long as it has been. This also goes for Honeywell as well. 3M for example has over 50,000 products. So if 5,000 of their products go and do horribly, if they start declining in sales, they don't perform nearly as well as some of their other products, maybe they have to get rid of them and completely shift the, the business in general. But if that happens, they still have 45,000 other products that will be very successful. One thing that has happened recently with 3M, this is just the most common example, is face masks. 3M is the largest producer in the world of face masks. So even when a lot of their other products are completely going to the floor and they're not getting nearly as much demand, it's the fact that they have so many different products that in any scenario, in this situation with the illness, their face mask demand are, is skyrocketing. They are selling ridiculous amount of face masks. So the same thing goes for Honeywell. While some of their products may be going down in sales, they have some of their products that are thriving. In the meantime, you will get excellent dividends. While the share price has been hit hard now, it has went from about $180 stock and then it went all the way down to, if I can get it on there, it just went down all the way to about $100. Uh, today it trades at $138. The only reason why I chose 3M over Honeywell is for two reasons. The first one is 3M is a dividend aristocrat. They're dividend king. They've been raising their dividends for over 60 years. Honeywell is a solid dividend company, but they don't have a streak as long as that. And if you see here, their dividend yield is 4%. But if we look at Honeywell's, it's not that high. Honeywell's dividend yield is 2.6. That's not bad. Typically, I want my portfolio at all times to get at least 3% in the portfolio. Right now, it averages right about 4% with the market being down the way it is. But uh, Honeywell is a company I'll consider adding to my portfolio. If you think I should add it to my portfolio, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know if you think I should be adding Honeywell to my portfolio or if I should just stick with 3M or maybe I should get 3M uh, out of the portfolio and switch it for Honeywell. Speaking of comments down below, we're going to be looking at channel comments here. I got a comment from however you say his name yesterday and it was giving me a video recommendation. I've been telling you guys to leave me video recommendations and uh, he says here, at the Millennial Investor, I wish you the best in your studies. I do actually have a video suggestion. You could bring up the most important key factors in a numerical analysis of a stock, such as price to earnings ratio, earnings per share, payout ratio, and why are they important and what are the key levels to look for. So I will be addressing that in my next video. I will be going deep dive into a stock. I just showed you a little bit there with Honeywell, what I look for in a company and why I like them. I have to see the long-term outlook as well as a lot of safe financial growth. And uh, yeah, I'll be addressing that in my next video. And uh, I appreciate you guys that have been able to last it through this whole video and watch the whole thing. Like I said, as I mentioned before, if you like what you see here with M1, and I'll be showing that in the next video, breaking down all what M1 has to offer as far as valuing companies and what I see in valuing dividend stocks, make sure to use that link down below. It'll give you and me both $10 to use towards a portfolio, and I'll mention it in the video. But uh, if you made it to the end, make sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell. And I thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.